So OpenAI just released the API for Sora 2 last week and honestly it's pretty insane. I'm using it to generate high quality UGC videos just like this, all automated inside of an agent I built in NADN. All you have to do is upload a product photo and a prompt and the agent takes care of the rest. I'm walking you through the entire copy paste system in this video, so let's get into it. Alright, so we are inside of Airtable right now where we usually like to set up a pretty simple dashboard or front end form that triggers and runs all of the NADN automation. So in this case, you'll see right here that we have a very simple form set up where we capture the video idea, the video prompt, reference image, the number of videos that we want to generate and the aspect ratio. And for the actual NADN automations, it is a two part flow right here that we have in step one is for essentially capturing the form data that we pass from Airtable via a webhook into this flow that basically takes the prompt, optimizes it for text to video along with the image, which we analyze, we pass into the main AI agent node. And then once that's done, triggers the second flow where we essentially pass all of that data with the prompt that we generated along with the reference image into Sora. And then we just run through a regular flow here where we wait for the video to be generated and then upload back into Airtable. So I'll walk you guys through step by step here what everything looks like. So let's just take here for video idea. We'll just do you just see a video of female and then for prompts, well, let's just do 10 second video of female holding the groom's package sitting at her kitchen table talking about how much better it is compared to green juices and other alternatives and then we will just upload the reference image which in this case i'll just do the croons packaging right here in this case i'll just do one video i'll do portrait or vertical style as the aspect ratio and then we just hit run flow and hit create then you'll see here under the search history tab that we have all of our previous completed runs along with the link to the actual generated videos and now this one is in progress so if i just open up the end end flow right here you'll see under executions that we are actually running through the first part right here here. let's just see you can see that right now it is running and now that has succeeded right here so you can see that we ran through the entire flow and now you'll see that this automatically triggers the second part of the flow which is now already waiting so you can see right here that we have a wait node in place for five minutes to actually generate and then grab the finished produced video inside of Sora so I'm just gonna pause the video right here until this flow is done and then I'll be back just a quick note yes you can obviously build out this entire workflow yourself by following along what I'm doing in the video. But if you are interested in having me potentially build out any AI solutions for your business, not just around Sora 2, but anything across your operations, feel free to book a call by clicking the link in the description below. All right, we are back and we can see that the video has been fully generated and Airtable has now been updated as well. So if we just go back into Airtable under the search history right here, you can see that the status is now complete. And then if we just go to the video results tab right here, you will see that we have the finished result here. And if I just open up the Google Drive link, we will get the actual video right here. Grunes is so much better than those green juices. I can actually enjoy this. One sweet gummy and I'm done. No mess, no earthy aftertaste. So you can see that it cuts off a little bit at the end there. And that's definitely, I would say, kind of like the main limitation with Sora at the moment, at least through the API, is that you only have that 10 second limit on the videos. You can work around that a little bit with the prompts here to kind of like make things specifically fit a little bit more inside of the 10 second limit. But yeah, other than that, I mean, I think this is really solid. And I mean, this is just like a very, very solid way to pump out massive amounts of content, right? So I figured I'd just walk you through a couple of more examples here so you guys can see what's actually possible. So let's just open up this one. I'll just open up a couple right here. I used to drink so many green juices, but Groons just fits my routine better. It's easier, tastes great, and I actually feel the difference. One little gummy and I'm good to go. Trust me, Groons are so much more convenient than messy green juices. And honestly, I crave these gummies. They're sugar-free, superfoods and a little bear, and I just toss them back with water and I'm done. No blender, no cleanup. My morning routine. My skin feels so smooth and luminous ever since I started using Glossier Future Dew. Seriously, it's made such a difference. I just tap a little along my cheekbones like this and look at that glow. It's like instant radiance in a...
Again, it cut off a little bit at the end, but other than that, I mean, the output is so strong now, right? So, I mean, there's just so many opportunities and ways you can run with this. But yeah, that's what the output looks like right now. Obviously, you can play around with the prompting and I'll show you guys how to do that in a second to kind of like get different, I guess, like types of videos. But for UGC in general, I mean, I love this. This is really good. So again, let's just go through the flow inside of any then. So like I said, it is a two part flow where we start by grabbing the entire form through a webhook right here where we grab basically the full ID from Airtable, the record ID that contains all of the information about the form that we uploaded in step one right here with the video idea, the video prompts, the reference image, the number of videos we want to create, the as and the aspect ratio. So all of that is basically pulled via a webhook through Airtable. And then this is what I mean. So we have the video idea right here. You just see video of a female video prompt. We have the status. We have the actual URL and aspect ratio right here portraits. So we have all of the variables, right? Then we just go through a two part flow right here where we create the folder where we will be storing the video. So right here, we basically just have it dynamically create the folder name inside of a drive folder that we basically connected this flow against. I won't go through kind of like setting up your Google Drive credentials, but again, very simple to do. Just create your new credential right here inside of the Google Drive node in an event and you can just follow the steps step by step. Then we essentially basically filter that the upload image here, basically the reference image is greater than zero. Essentially, this means that we've uploaded an image. We then basically download the reference image right here and send that into Cladinary. And the reason we do this is because once we want to pass the reference image back into Kai, which is what we are using for source API, having a public URL where the image is stored is a lot simpler way to essentially pass the information of the image than doing it through a binary field, which we currently have right here, where the image is sent as a binary file. So we essentially upload this into Cladinary for reference later in the flow. And then this is the first part of the, I guess like where the magic happens, where we are essentially optimizing our prompt that we sent in. Because remember our prompt was super basic, right? Our prompt was essentially, if I just open up the first note here, a 10 second video of a female holding the groom's package, sitting at our kitchen table, talking about how much better it is compared to green juices and other alternatives. So what we want to do here is basically optimize that prompt for Sora 2. And you can see right here that the output is dialogue. Groons is so much better than those green juices. I can actually enjoy this. We have the emotion, which is enthusiastic. We have the action, which is a female character holding up the Groons package. We have the character, a woman in her late 20s. And then we have the setting, a bright inviting kitchen. So essentially we take the, I guess like pretty basic or simple prompt that we have and format it in a much better way that fits the Sora 2 model. And you can see right here under the main prompt, the input concept is, and then we just have the prompt, which is the 10 second video of a female holding the Groons package. And then right here under the prompt for the system message, we're basically telling it to be an AI assistant specializing in creating prompts for text to video generation. The sole function is to convert a simple concept provided by the user into a detailed structured prompt. The prompt you generate must follow this format. And this is where we get the dialogue, the emotion, action, character setting, and camera function that we saw in the optimized prompt. We tell it to not include any additional text, instructions, or explanations, or markdown. The response is only the structured prompt. So again, the whole goal here is essentially taking the very basic or simple prompt that we gave it and turn it into this format right here, which you can see that again, that it did in the output right here. Moving on, we basically merge the image along with the updated or optimized prompt. And then we just map everything in the set node where we have the idea, which is the 10 second video of a female holding the grooms package. We have the how many videos we want to create, which is one, the aspect ratio, which is portrait, the reference image, which is the cladinary link. And then we have the master prompt, which is ma mapped off of the optimized prompt node. So we have the full prompt right here. What we then do is pass the image into this analyze image node with the entire goal of basically just getting a full breakdown of what the actual image looks like. So for the prompt right here, we have that the node is to analyze the given image and determine if it primarily depicts a product or a character or both. If the image is of a product, return the analysis in a YAML format with the following fields, the brand name, the color scheme, font style, 
And if the images of a character return in the same format with the following fields, a character name, a color scheme, outfit style, visual description, and then only return in this YAML format, do not explain or add any other comments. Essentially, it's just a way to add even more context about the reference image into Sora for later. So then we pass everything into this main AI agent node. And this one is basically following a two part prompt where we have the user message right here, which is basically give me and then a dynamic field right here, one idea. And this is again pulled from the first part of the set node where we have basically how many videos we want to create, which in this case is one. Give me one idea about this main topic. And then we have the master prompt set node, pull the what's your idea tab. And if I just pull up the set node, just so you can see, basically we're just dragging and dropping here. So what's your idea? How many videos? We just drag and drop. So this is dynamic, right? The aspect ratio is portrait. And then we have the master prompt. So for all the prompts you generate, follow the structure of this prompt. Then we have the master prompt right here. And here's the key. We have the provided here is the image reference URL and the description that we just pulled of the actual image. So now we will be able to pass into Sora 2 the main prompt following the master prompt guideline that we want to give it. We have the reference image URL of the actual product photo and a analyzed description of that image. We then basically split everything out into a title, a caption, prompt, an aspect ratio, and the image reference. And then we just log the prompt and everything into Airtable for step one. So we have the research, we have the title, the video prompt, the caption. This isn't really needed. I just wanted to map everything based on the output. And then for the final step, we basically just update the record right here with the folder ID where we will be uploading the finished video, the folder, the reference image URL, and then the record ID, which we will match for step two of the flow. So opening up step two right here. Again, this is triggered off a webhook. Once the second flow finishes, this one triggers immediately. And then for the first step, we basically get the input, which is the record ID. And then you can see right here, we have the video prompt, we have the caption, we have the title, we have the aspect ratio, and then we have the to do, which is true. And this is what triggered the entire flow. Once the status of the video is set to true, this triggers the subflow essentially. And then we basically just confirm that the to do is set as true and that runs through the true field or true branch. If it's not, if I guess, or if the prompt isn't fully done in the previous step yet, this flow won't trigger. And, but if it does, we just do nothing just as kind of like a fail safe. And then again, we just use a set node right here to map the prompt, the aspect ratio and the image URL. So we have that handy. And then we start passing everything into Sora 2. Now for using Sora 2's API, we're using it through Kai.ai, which is this platform right here. Essentially a ton of different API opportunities right here. You to access the best video image and music models inside of one API. And they obviously have Sora 2, right? So you can just grab your API keys inside of right here. Now for setting up your credentials, it's really easy. We're just using a header auth for this. And then for your actual API key, the only thing you need to do is type in under name authorization and then under value, you will just follow this right here. So you have bearer and then you have a space and then you have your API key. You can just copy and paste that right there, save, and then you're good to go. Under the actual fields that we want to pass into Kai via this HTTP request node is essentially a couple of things. So right here, we're using model, which is Sora 2 image to video. The input you can see right here is the prompt, which is the actual full master prompt. You can see that we have a image URL, which is the reference image uploaded to Cladinary. And this is the benefit of having it uploaded to Cladinary because then you have it as a public URL that anybody can just paste and visit. So if I just open this up, it should show the actual image again right here. Again, it's essentially a way for any system to easily reference or pull up your image. And then we have the aspect ratio, which is portraits. We're just doing one items per batch and for the batch interval, we'll just do a thousand. No need to pay much attention to that. But the main step right here is basically just following the documentation of how you actually pass the data into Sora 2 via Kai's API. We then set up a wait note right here for five minutes. That's essentially just to give Kai enough time to actually generate the video on the back end. So if I just go into here and then I just go into logs, you can see right here, this is where we have a full overview of all of the videos that we've been generating. So this was the one that we just generated right now. Grunes is so much better than those green juices. You can see that the status is obviously a success. So this one worked, right? So we essentially wait five minutes right here to give the platform enough time to generate the video. 
We then go through a get request right here to actually pull the task ID of the video that we are currently working on, which in this case was this video right here, right? And this is the task ID. Again, using the same credentials as earlier, we're basically just polling if the video is complete. Then we move into a switch node where we have a couple of different branches. If the video is done, we will have success. And that in that case, we can just continue moving on through the flow. If it's still running, we just run loop through the entire flow again. And then if it fails, we basically just log the video in a error status inside of Airtable. But if the video is still running or still in progress, we essentially loop back through the wait node and then wait another five minutes to see if the video has been generated. After that, we just send through a code node where we are parsing the URL with the finished video with the file URL, which we then are able to download. Grunes is so much better than those green juices. I can and then we essentially just upload the finished video inside of the Google Drive that we set up. So we have the file name, which is dynamic based on the video and the task ID uploaded into our Google Drive folder inside of the parent folder. And then we just finally log everything inside of Airtable. So we have the record ID, the production status is done, and then we have the video URL. And then lastly, we just update the record as status completed. And that's pretty much it, guys. That is the entire flow. Again, not super complex. The main essential parts here right is based on basically pulling your data from Airtable along with the reference image using the prompt plus the idea to optimize the prompt for Sora based on the structure right here to kind of get that very UGC type of output and this is where you want to play around if you want different types of video styles right if you want kind of like more polished kind of like studio style commercials you can have your master prompt be more around kind of like having that sort of style and then any prompt or idea you pass into here is optimized based on that requirement instead right so yeah essentially we pass the data through the node right here to optimize for Sora based on our master prompt along with the reference image that we merge we analyze the image to get a better description we pass that into Airtable which then triggers the second flow right here that generates the video pulls the video and then uploads the finished video into Airtable all right you just saw the full workflow of how you can create high quality UGC videos inside of any then now this sort of to workflow is just scratching the surface of what we are able to do for fast scaling brands or agencies. So if you are interested in seeing what a solution could look like for your business, feel free to book a call by clicking the link in the description below. If you found any value from this video, I'd appreciate it if you wanted to subscribe. Any new ideas for content, feel free to drop a comment below. But until then, I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.